Hello, we're going to look here at how a pathologist provides some important prognostic information when examining a case of renal cell carcinoma. So to begin with, I would like to share with you the protocol that we often use, and this is laid out by the College of American Pathologists. It is internationally well known, and it provides um, a system of assessing for prognostic factors. So importantly, uh, one of the prognostic factors we need to look at is the type of tumor. And you can see there are many different types, so don't panic. Most of the time, we are dealing with clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Then, of course, we will also need to grade the tumor. And as you know, grading is performed on histology or on microscopy. And we can do this by assessing how prominent the nucleoli are at different magnifications. We also assess the degree of nuclear pleomorphism. Now, another very important prognostic exercise is to actually stage the tumor. So we look at the AJCC staging system, and this is the P pathological staging. Um, and we can see that there are some important uh, sort of cutoffs that we need to look at. One is the size. So we have 4cm, 7cm, and 10cm as important cutoffs. We also need to look at the local extension, whether or not it goes into major veins or whether it extends beyond the renal capsule into perinephric tissues such as the perirenal fat or the renal sinus fat near the hilar region or even whether it goes beyond Gerota's fascia. And of course, if available, we can also assess the lymph nodes. Uh, the Metastatic stage is usually not uh, done at the time of primary resection because often there's no evidence of METS and that's why the tumor is resectable or operable. So we're going to look briefly at some examples of GROSS followed by microscopic evaluation on how we prognosticate these tumors. So first of all, uh, in the gross assessment, we can see that this is a tumor in the kidney. And just to orientate you, this is what's left of the upper pole. This is the region of the renal pelvis. And this is actually a very large vessel, the renal vein. And this little area here is the renal sinus fat. And this is the lower pole of the kidney. This is the capsule of the kidney and the perinephric fat. So we can see grossly that this uh, is a very large tumor and I would be concerned about this area, whether or not it is going beyond the capsule. And of course, there is very obvious gross involvement of the renal vein in this instance. And so the vascular margin would be very important. That is also a surgical margin. So looking at this tumor, because it is obviously going into the renal vein, it would already be stage three and at least 3A extends into the renal vein. Uh, we can't really see whether it's going to the vena cava, so sometimes that is actually uh, relying on radiologic features or the intraoperative findings of the surgeon. So this is at least PT3A. I would also be concerned about this area of capsular invasion and we would need to examine it microscopically as well. Here is another example and the color is quite different here because uh, this case has been fixed in formalin for a number of hours and so you can see that the kidney is actually a lot browner. So this is the renal cortex, the renal medulla and here we have the tumor and this is all perinephric fat and in fact uh, this is the adrenal gland. You can see the bright yellow adrenal cortex and the dark brown adrenal medulla. Clearly the tumor is not involving the adrenal in this plane of sectioning. However, what we can see is that there is tumor that seems to extend beyond the renal capsule, which I am outlining here. The renal capsule, it's breached here and the tumor has gone beyond it into the perinephric fat. So again, looking at the staging, this would be again at least PT3 because it's extending into the major veins or perinephric tissue. So in this instance, it's probably PT3A because it's going into the perirenal fat. And uh, we often have to confirm our impression on microscopic sections.